yard but I figure it's got some potential it's gonna get some work to get started in the spring get us in a new neighborhood uh, with a lot of nice yards about a spring cleanup right so that would be the first thing is to do that and then we can really get a good feel for the property but obviously we're gonna maintain it too and mow it but this is a bi-weekly yard again not my ideal but it's gonna give us enough work to keep us busy and get me into this new neighborhood so a lot of work to be done and I was also thinking about utilizing this property as a nice training facility, a training property for all of my new hires. Something I always have been thinking about ever since last year. And last year, um, those of you that saw the video last year, I utilized one of the commercial properties that Scott, uh, a friend of mine in the area that also has a business, let us use that property. So we basically maintained the property with him, but I was able to kind of train uh, one of the new guys that I got, you know, just see how he edged and trimmed and got him on the stand on mower. He's only used to sit down, zero turn, stuff like that. So I just wanted to kind of get a property where there's no one there and there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of edging, a lot of trimming, a lot of open space to practice actually mowing and moving around uh, the grandstand or any stand on mower. So that was a good first time practice training area for me. Scott was gracious enough to let us use that property. I made sure we didn't jack it up. Um, he made sure too. But uh, between the two of us, we were able to coach my new hire and that kind of helped break the ice and kind of get the ball rolling for the rest of the week. So when I took him to my regular properties, it wasn't as much of a learning curve. So I kind of foresee the same thing for this property because there's so much to do, so much trimming and edging. Not that it has to be perfect or pristine, but it's a good way to practice the edging and there's definitely plenty of trimming around everything, um, as well as the mowing probably would be a little cautious about getting anyone on the mowers except maybe way down there where it's fl more flat and level. The rest of this property is one big incline all the way up to the street there so I definitely would want to be cautious with the mowers and I'm going to be cautious on the mowers myself but first we're going to clean all this up and then when it's time to mow we'll come through here and we'll cut it real nice and trim and edge and it'll just like I said I think it'll be a good opportunity for everyone to kind of get familiar with the equipment that I have um, kind of get reacclimated to the whole process of trimming edging mowing and all that so that we can hit the ground running with all the nice pristine yards that have been well maintained all year long and don't have as much natural area like this and aren't as forgiving as a property like this. The homeowner doesn't live here at this property. They're actually going to put this property on the market. So it's a temporary property. Again, another reason why I'm uh, 
willing to take it on because it will hopefully lead to other work in this neighborhood. Not necessarily for this. Once that this sells, then you know may maybe I can take it over from the people that move in. We could potentially maintain the property after that. But if not, we'll move on and hopefully we can market around this area and get some more properties all around here. So that's what it's all about. It's the name of the game: growth. They also want me to. They as if I do gutter cleaning, which I don't. I mean, I've done it before, but it's not a service I regularly offer. This is a definitely high roof, super steep, so I'm not sure if I even want to address that. I don't have any harnesses or any proper gear like that. It's just a ladder and blowers and stuff. I can get up on the back easy enough and climb around on there, but as you see, it's, it's super steep. The front's not so bad. It's a couple tiers, and I can just run around and get all the gutters up there, but getting to this gutter... I mean, I'd have to rent some massive ladder if rental works or someone even has a ladder that long to even get up there just so I can get the ladder up high enough so I can stand there and kind of, you know, work my way down, blow in the gutters, get down, move the ladder, just keep blowing all that off. That's about the only way I can see it because I don't want to get up there and walk over there and risk falling off. Uh, on the back side, it's kind of same similar situation but it's not as steep and it's not as far down. You know, you got another roof there I, that I could stand on and blow the gutters and I can get up there and blow those gutters with the ladder reaching right up there. But this one and on the other side, it's the exact same thing. So the two sides, not sure how I would tackle that other than like I said, getting a giant ladder. If I can find one big enough to get up there and just stand there and blow it off. But the front, the backs, that should be easy enough. But let me know what you guys think about that whole situation and gutter cleaning and if I should just say yay or nay um, obviously got to come up with the right price I got to factor in everything renting the ladder how, how long it's going to take me to do it so on and so forth let me know what ideas you have about that and also this cleanup let me know what you guys think about this cleanup to me this looks like a no-brainer looks like just a you know not the worst, not the best, obviously, but not the worst cleanup in the world. I mean, I've seen plenty of guys on social media and in the area taking care of properties like this. I mean, somebody had to take care of it. But if I have a few guys with me, we can just kind of create a wall of leaves and just blow everything this way, blow the other half that way, blow all this down, off to the side, down, down, all into the woods down there, all down into the woods. There's a creek down there, don't want to get it down in there, so we'll just kind of blow everything this way, and then kind of divide over here and blow everything that way, and there's woods all on the other side there, just like behind us here, and we would just blow everything that way, and the same thing on that side of the house, just keep blowing everything that way. So that's what we would do. But seems to make sense to me. Let me know what you guys think. How much would you charge for this? Another thing that I look at when I come out for a quote somewhere I've never been before, a new neighborhood, especially these kind of neighborhoods with all these woods and everything, just they just kind of carved in neighborhoods in the middle of the woods and just left it natural like that. I always want to check, like, you know, I just keep, I think to myself, what am I going to be doing here? How am I going to get in and out of here? Is there adequate enough space for me, you know, to park along the side uh, of the property? If not, where can I park? Can I get down the road? Is there a turnaround big enough for me to get around with my trailer and then come back out? So I think about all those things, like where am I gonna park to unload my equipment? What's the best attack? You can spend all your time and effort doing all these things, looking at the property, quoting your prices, and then you, you get everything approved and you're gonna be profitable. And then you get there the first time to do the work and you have your trailer and your employees if you have any and all of a sudden you realize you got a problem because you have nowhere to park you can't really get in and out of anywhere you're kind of stuck it becomes a real tricky situation if you have to do that every week or every other week that becomes a big issue so you definitely want to make sure that you keep all that stuff in mind